Hello fellow Unreal Engine artists, designers and developers. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at adding enclosed room functionality to our spline walls. So you can turn your open walls into rooms or back into wall system and still with the ability to do your sharp corners if you so desire. So let's get straight into how to do this. OK, so today's tutorial is going to be a fairly short one. We want to take our spline walls and adapt them to be able to create enclosed rooms. So if we look at this wall here, if you look at the spline, then you'll see that it has a closed loop flag here. If I click on that, you can see that it encloses the loop. But at the moment, we don't generate any wall segments or any other segments between those last two points. So today we're going to update our spline wall blueprint to cater for closed loop splines. So let's uncheck that and go into our blueprint. If you haven't been following with the series so far, I've got a link in the description and uh, we need to now add this ability to have enclosed rooms if we want them. So first thing we need to do is add a new variable. So in the variables here, we'll add a Boolean called enclose room and make sure that's visible. And then we'll need to check that and set the closed loop if that is the case. So let's go into our construction sequence here and let's just add another pin to the uh, construction sequence. So if we go to here and do insert another execution pin, um, we'll drag off here. In fact, we'll, we'll come back here in a second. Let's go up to the top and let's add, drag our spline in with control. And if you drag off there, you should be able to set closed loop. So all we want to do is take the enclosed room Boolean here and drag that into the closed loop. So if in our um, blueprint, if we tick enclosed room, it will set the spline to be closed loop. If we uncheck that, the spline won't be closed loop. It won't do anything yet, but then we'll uh, process the extra added point in a moment. So now we just need to connect that to our newly created execution pin. So go into our sequence pin, drag out and up to the set closed loop pin here. And we'll just create a comment around here saying set this as an enclosed room. OK, so what this does by making the spline a closed loop it creates another virtual point at the end of the spline, which is the same as the start point. So if you remember when we um, were going through, let's go the, here, going through each spline segment, we, when we calculated the number of spline points, we subtracted two from the end. So what we did is we didn't process the last point on the spline because we didn't have anything to connect it to. So instead of subtracting two here, we'll subtract one. And that will mean now we'll process all of the points, including the last point. And then what we were doing is going through and calculating the number of meshes in each segment and processing those. And then we were then generating pillars if we had clamped tangents at any of the corners. Now, because we weren't processing the last point, what we had to do for the clamp corners is after we'd gone through all of the points, we added one more to the spline index and process the last point. Well, now we're going through that last point as well. So we don't need to do this. So you can select those two nodes and delete them. And now it will generate the uh, the clamp corners for all of the points without that extra um, without that extra check at the end. OK, so that may be all we need to do. Let's do a quick test. Now, if we select our spline wall, we have a new option here, enclosed room. And if I click on that, it instantly 
connects the last point to the start point and you can see that the tangents are nicely calculated as well and we've still got all of our original functionality so i can select individual points and do shift t to make them sharp tangents with pillars on if i want that just like this and if i don't want an include closed room anymore I can click on this so that we go back to a wall, regular wall. Now the observant among you will have noticed that we processed all of the index points and yet this is still working even when it's not in closed room. So um, why is that the case? Uh, now actually it's more luck than judgment but I'll, I'll explain it because you do need to be aware of it. If you go back to the spline wall we're calculating all of the um, points, even when the enclosed room is set to false. So what happens here is that when we when we calculate the distance along the spline for the last spline point, when it then gets the distance along spline for the next spline point after that, well, if we don't have enclosed room, there isn't one. But uh, thankfully, this returns a distance of zero rather than an error. And what that means is that the distance becomes negative. And because this distance or length is negative, when it divides it by the mesh length, the number of segments is also negative. So it doesn't pass this greater than zero check. Um, now, it's, it's more um, a, a luck that this worked rather than good judgment. So good programming practice would probably say that we should put a check in here and say, if you're not enclosing the room, don't process this last point. But um, what I'll do is rather than do that, I'll just comment this so that I know why this works. So in my current spline distance, I'm just gonna put a comment here that says, if not closed loop, this will be negative. And then on the calculation here, I'll put another comment that says, therefore, no segments will be generated because of that greater than zero. So at least if I come back to this in a few months time, I know why this code works for non-enclosed loops. So um, as I said, we now have a nice simple enclosed room, unenclosed room feature. Uh, quick video today but in the next video I'm going to wrap up the spline wall portion of this playlist by talking about how you can convert your spline walls into static meshes or even nanite meshes so that if you have lots of these on your level you have a more performant game. So uh, stick around for that and after the next episode we will start to get into the very interesting area of geometry scripts where we can automate a lot of the creation of structures that we've done in the past and new structures as well. So stay subscribed and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.